Hey, this is Phil Lilly, Lilly's Landing Resort and Marina on Lake Tenicomo. Gonna do one cast today, but I'm not on Tenicomo today. I'm on Bull Shoals. We said that we would try to do some uh, some shows, some videos on other parts of uh, our area, other lakes, and as you can see, I am below Parasite Dam on Bull Shoals. That's Parasite Dam. The uh, powerhouse is on the left and the spillway is on the right. They're running two units of water on Tani Como, so there's a fair amount of water coming over the top. Um, I've been out here for about an hour and a half and have not caught a fish. Been trying mainly up pretty close to the dam at the rock pile. There's a big, big, big pile of rocks up there. Um, uh, everybody around here knows about the rock pile. It's kind of a mag magnet for fish. Uh, a lot of times it's uh, walleye that like to hang around there, but I was, I was actually looking at my um, live scope and I saw a lot of fish around and on top of that, that pile. It's about eight feet deep the water is on top of it. I'm in 20 foot of water right now and I'm pretty much in the channel um, of the lake down here but I couldn't get anything to bite. If I'd brought minnows maybe I could have caught them. They might have been bluegill, might have been crappie. Um, no, they weren't white bass. I don't know. But anyhow, it's the water up here. Uh, there at the uh, rock pile right below the spillway is about 48 and I'm finding 50 to 53 degrees here and I was up in the Swan Creek and I saw 59 degree water there. Um, so what I'm going to do is just uh, kind of fish around. I looked over in the trees over here on the parasite side for fish and a lot of times I've caught white bass there. Didn't see anything on the live scope, so I didn't mess around there too much. So I'm gonna try this other side. Saturday I came up here with a couple, three friends, Rick Moore and his two, or his son and son-in-law. And we fished this bank and um, didn't do any good except caught one fish. Ricky caught a real nice, about a 19 inch brown trout, which didn't surprise me at all on a white jig, so. I'm going to go back up here a little ways on this uh, high dirt bank and, and fish this bank down here a little ways. Um, this is actually an eddy. The flow, of course, comes out of the, um, the powerhouse is the most current, so it comes down through here. There's a little bit of current there, but it's, it's, it's really pretty still along this bank until you get down to, I don't know, just past this cut and then the current picks it back up and there's just a real slight current that goes on down. Uh, Bull Shoals is dropping almost a foot a day right now. Uh, although I did hear that they've cut back um, some of the generation at Bull Shoals so that might slow down. It's, it's only about a foot and a half from its power pool. I did post a fishery report on, on uh, Ozark Anglers forum. I have not posted any pictures or anything so I haven't posted shared the post to uh, any Facebook pages or anything so you want to go on ozarkanglers.com and look under the Tani Como forum you will see my fishing report from today so I'm gonna try hitting these things uh, it's gonna be a little different one cast because uh, it's gonna be heavily heavily edited I might not even turn the camera on until I start catching fish um, we'll see, see how it progresses. It's about 4.30, 4.47, April 13th, Tuesday. Oh, I was um, selected for a jury uh, yesterday. I uh, was going to hear a case at uh, Foresight on Taney County, and they got us in the jury. It got us into the courtroom and then told us to go home. They said that uh, there was continuance and they could not go any further on the court case. So they dismissed us. So I had the day off today and tomorrow, which I was planning on being there tomorrow too. Um, met some nice folk. 
Um, and I really kind of wish I, uh, we had, uh, it would have it been a learning experience. I've never done it before. Um, and the people in the in our pool, our jury pool, seem to be real nice, different parts of the county. So it's been nice to get to know those people a little bit, but oh well. So we'll uh, we'll see if we can find some fish here. Uh, they call this the pothole area because seriously, you don't know what you're going to catch here. You could catch trout, you could catch walleye, big drum. I caught a big drum last year. I caught a well, that was the Swan Creek bit, caught a big carp. You can catch, in the summertime, you can catch striper. You can catch them here now, but they run in the summer. Um, white bass, I already said walleye, yellow perch, white bass, crappie, white bass. Uh, in the summertime, you catch catfish, big flathead. So we'll see, see what happens. Well, I struck out fishing up <coughs> above Swan Creek, so I'm going up in Swan Creek right now. I got 58 <coughs> degree water up here. I just talked to a young man on the bank and he has not had any luck today. So I'm just going to run up here. I've got my live scope on and just scoping out, seeing if I see any schools of fish right here at the mouth. This is um, the Shadow Rock Park area. Right now I'm about 18 foot of water. So there's a big difference <clears throat> in water temp, about 10 degrees difference between the main lake and up here in the creek. The creek has got a little bit of color to it, the water does. Kind of a chalky color. I came up here when I first got here and I didn't see any fish either, but they too tend to run up here in the evening. I am seeing some fish, not a lot, but they're up toward the surface, only about six foot deep. We'll come up to 15 feet deep water. Not very many, I don't think it's enough really to stop and mess with. And it's about, well, it's six o'clock now. <clears throat> I'm gonna go over here. This field out here is flooded. The edge of the creek channel is up here just a little ways. Sometimes those fish tend to hug that, that drop off. I am seeing. I'm seeing some fish. Okay, I'm in 12 foot now. 
and I'm over close to the uh, to the edge. So I'm going to fish this just a minute. All I'm basically doing is throwing a white. Right now I got a white and blue 332nd ounce jig on. Yeah, I'm, st I'm seeing some fish. I don't know what they are. And I don't know if they'll bite. Good old live scope, it's good. I just told um, the young man that was on the bank, it's live scope's good for finding fish that don't bite. It's my experience anyhow. See, I'm in nine feet of water now, so. White bass usually like things moving pretty quick. <clears throat> they are usually a very aggressive fish, especially if they're feeding. And I think that's what you're gonna, I'm gonna find in the creek if I find any fish up here. You'll find an occasional walleye, I think, up here, but um, for the most part, it's gonna be, it's gonna be white bass. Oh. Mm, that might have been the, some grass in the field. It would have been nice if that was a bite. I can't really see the edge of the field. It, it drops off real, it drops off like a cliff to the edge. So I could be throwing up in the field and grabbing some grass. That was not grass. That was a thump. That was a white bass thump. Oh. I got a fish. Oh, it's a big old bluegill. <laughs> Actually, these are great to eat. I'd rather eat these than anything, just about any other fish. This is what we caught the other day when we came up here with uh, my buddies. Bunch of big old bluegill. That might be what I got here just a minute ago, that bite. Caught a fish. That's a start. I just find some white bass. Oh, 
Hey, hey, hey. Wow, that was right up on the edge and he hit it as soon as it hit the water. This is a white bass. This is not a bluegill. Cool. Oh yeah. No, it's a walleye. Ha! Huh. Looky there. He's pretty. These have to be um, eight, 18 inches to keep. I'm not keeping anything today anyhow. Sweet. I showed it to you. Yeah, he hit it. As soon as it hit the water. So that what I thought was grass a minute ago was not grass, it was a bite. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get a little closer. You know, the water over that field might be deep enough to hold fish. I can't. Some, sometimes they get up in that shallow water on top of that field and, and feed if the meadows are up there. I wish I could see the edge. I think I do. I'm only in seven and a half foot of water where I'm sitting. So. Oh, another good tap. Shadow Rock Park behind me is a really neat park. It's right in the mouth of Swan Creek and Bull Shoals. Um, they've got a little uh, rodeo grounds. They used to have the uh, county fair here. And it just kept flooding, so they moved it. But there's tennis courts and a basketball court and a playground and on it. You can hear kids in the background. The only problem is it's been underwater so much the last few years. Highway 160 is behind me. That's all the traffic. Oh, I felt something there.
I'm going to keep moving up, work this um, drop off. So I'm, I'm sitting in two foot of water and I'm throwing up in this field and I've gotten several bites. And I'm pretty sure that's where I hooked the walleye is up in the, yeah. They're up in this field, just, it's amazing. This looks like a crappie up in this field. I don't know how deep of water it is up there, but that is a sweet crappie. That's about 11, 11 and a half inch crappie. So, I'm now three species. <laughs> and I think I might have found where the fish are. And that's up in this field. I'm in uh, two and a half foot of water. I just saw it. Just had another bite. Just saw a turtle up there. So right now I'm off the creek and sitting on top of this field that's flooded. Water temp's the same. The wind's blowing up in this field, which probably helps. So that's pretty cool. Had one boat fishing here, John boat, one guy, and he just went up the creek. He had not caught anything. He was fishing back towards the bluff, but I don't think he got that close to the field. I don't think it was a fluke that I caught a fish. Usually when you catch one crappie, you're gonna catch more. hit the spot lock and sit here for a minute. I'm in uh, three foot of water now. <clears throat> oh, there's Bob. Right there, right by the boat. There he is. Ah, it's bluegill. Another big one. They're not the huge, huge bluegill that you'll catch on Table Rock here in a little bit, but they're nice ones. They're big enough to eat. He hit that right by the boat. I'm gonna move out just a little bit.
I'm actually picking up a lot of fish right on the edge, which I just fell off the edge there, right here. I'm going to back up and fish more on the edge of the field. See if that changes anything. Well, could have been bottom. Swan Creek is actually a really nice creek to, uh, to float. Um, locals probably wouldn't want me to talk about it too much because I think it's more of a local uh, thing. There's not really any good pr uh, public uh, put-ins. But if you can uh, if you can figure it out, it's uh, generally it's kind of like Beaver Creek. It's it's real rocky bottom, so generally the water is super clear, and um, it's actually really good fishing. Good smallmouth creek. So I'm going to move out in the field. I've moved closer to the bluff, which the further this way you get in the field, the deeper it is. So I'm in over three foot of water now. <clears throat> and I keep getting bites out here, and I'm Pretty sure they're the bluegill, but. There he is. That's another bluegill. I am not complaining. Fish is a fish. And he ate that thing. Look at that. <laughs> Inhaled it. Cool. I am, uh, I bet you I'm 80 yards up in this field. Got another 80, 80 yards before I get to the edge, inside edge. Just add another bite. Still four foot of water. So this whole field, of course, it's dropping a foot a day, so this is going to be not as deep tomorrow. But for right now, these, at least the bluegill are up in this field. Probably feeding on minnows. Starting to get a little bit shallower back here. It's three foot now. There, I got him. I've gotten a lot of bites the last two casts. This is not a bluegill. Ooh, I see some carp. Big carp. I'm not going to say what this is. Last time I I thought it was a white bass and it was a walleye. But it does feel like a white bass this time. And it would be awesome if we got a bunch of whites that would come in here. Oh, it's a white. It's a white bass. Nice. 
I don't know if I can lift him. <sighs> big old sow. It's got a big belly. She might have spawned some. Can't tell. You'd have to clean him, clean her to find out. About a pound and a quarter, maybe a pound and a half. That's sweet. That's the first white bass of the year for me. And where you find one white bass, you usually find more. That's what I said about the crappie though. I'm sitting in 4.3 feet of water. I saw three or four big fish, and I'm sure that they were either buffalo or some kind of carp when I was fighting that. Oh, I see one right now. It's about a couple of feet underneath the surface. Those, uh, those carp will come up in here. Oh, I see a bunch of them now. They'll come up in here to spawn after, usually after the white bass. But these, these uh, carp, they will hit this jig. And uh, some of them look to be about 10 pounds, so. That would be fun. I'm picking up quite a few fish on my live scope out here. They could be the carp that I'm seeing. I'm picking up a bunch of fish on my live scope and they they look to me like they're white bass because they're <clears throat> they're running around pretty fast and they're kind of grouped up a lot of them, but I keep getting bites. I'm almost in six foot of water now. The closer I get, there he is. The closer I get to the bluff, oh, that's a crappie. The closer I get to the bluff, the deeper the water is. It's another nice crappie. You know, if I were to, I think if I were to uh, start trolling up and down this ah, this uh, flat, I'd probably pick up whites and crappie. That's a keeper. That's about 10, 10 and a, 10 and a half. It's pretty cool to come up here and swan and find a few fish. This place is packed when the white bass are running. And it was just, I don't know, a week, two weeks ago. Of course, being right next to Forsyth. People do come from all over to fish these creeks during white bass season. It's a lot of fun. Oh yeah, these fish are on my live scope. They're right here, school of them. Five foot of water, so they're not very deep. Oh. 
Oh, man, I'm getting so many bites. Well, the first cast, they throw it out there and it sinks. I get a bump and I miss it because I'm not paying any attention. Fishing pretty close to the bluff now. Still catching keeper creppy. These crappie don't look like they're, it looks to me like they've already spawned out. I'm not catching any, anything with bellies on them. They could be males too. Well, I threw that one right on the bank and I had a bite. So those crappie might be on the bank spawning this evening. I don't know. Well, I'm just about ready to sign off and before it gets too dark. Um, Well, it's been fun. Hope you've enjoyed this, uh, this one cast. I probably got a, an hour and 30 minutes of uh, video to go through and uh, cut it down. But I'll tell you, if I was keeping fish, I would have had a pretty good meal. The walleye was short, but, and there was a couple bluegill that was probably too small to clean, but there was some bluegill and most, I think all but maybe one crappie was a keeper. And the white bass certainly was a good fish to keep. So that was a lot of fun. I, I'm, I'm glad I came over here and found some fish. Um, it's not always the case. I'm, I've had some awfully good trips over here, but most of the trips, most of the trips don't go very good, but this was fun. 
Thanks for watching. We'll do it again tomorrow, probably on Tanny Como.